All right, part two of walking around in Lima. Yeah, it's um, it's the auto museum here in town. It's actually a private collection. Uh, so this is the auto museum. It's way outside of town. So it was like a 30 minute ride just mm -hmm. straight into the desert. Yeah. And now there's kind of a community out here, like a wealthy community. But uh, I mean, it's just barren desert around you and stuff. So it's kind of kind of cool, but I've heard it's a huge collection. So we'll see what it looks like. Mm. There's no other body exactly like that. Wow. It's it's a one-off. Lo llamo Jorge Nicolini, los amigos de Arizona. Sí. Una picture. Yo yo voy a ser el fotógrafo. Ah, perfecto. Sí, perfecto. Yo, yo soy buen fotógrafo. Sí, sí, sí. sí. So, uh, are you filming? Yep. Uh, it's one of the first cars to be brought into uh, Peru. It is, I'm not going to remember it because it's so rare. Uh, it's a Clement, 1903, and he found it up in Cusco. And it's one cylinder. One cylinder. Yeah, nine horsepower, and it moves that along. It's amazing. Um, there's so many unique cars that he's telling us about all these different ones. And then this is the oldest car in the collection. It's 1901. And so it's a Boyer, I mean, this era of cars I know almost nothing about. So again, one cylinder, 402 cc's, three and a half horsepower. I mean, you can see at this time too, the cars were more like a go-kart. You could still fit people in them, but they didn't have the horsepower to move the bigger, bigger vehicles. But what's so cool is that it's so diverse. I mean, over here is a, a Fox body Mustang, right? So you have something from the 80s he appreciates and likes, so he bought it. And then next to that, an MG. So you've got the obscure stuff, and then you've got the much newer stuff. This is the uh, Ferrari that, uh, if you check out on Petrolicious, there's a good video. I watched it years ago. Once I heard this museum was here, um, I, I just Googled the museum and I started watching this video and went, I watched this like five years ago. And it's a video of him and I think the Ferrari, I think it was, he, they were saying something about being his favorite or whatever, but he drives all these sort of like a, uh, Jay Leno of Peru where he's so into cars, it's not just collecting them like pieces of art. Uh, he was telling us that uh, all of these are driven, all of these are in perfect running order, which I just love. It's one thing to just have them sitting there as pieces of art. It's another thing to love them so much that you want to take the chance that they could get used or light on fire or get in a crash or whatever and, and go drive them. So, pretty cool. The auto I is considered unique in South America, in Inglaterra. Solo se fabricaron 21 autos en aluminio. Sí. La competencia liviana. Yeah, see, see, it's light. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Perfecto. Vamos, vamos. <laughs> He's just telling us that uh, this one he was saying took, uh, I think he said uh, 10 years to fully restore it. He says, however long it takes, it takes to restore them. So uh, he's all about original, Mr. Uh, Nicolini. And so um, if it needs parts from England, he imports the parts from England. And it's funny because our friends with uh, their van just were denied importing a part because it's used. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure there's some ways around that when you're restoring a car collection. Aparte de, por ejemplo, 10 personas todos los días trabajan en los workshops. Wow. Uno de ellos, uno, su trabajo eh, fabrica accesorios que no hay para comprar. Por ejemplo, ¿cuál? En este coche. Mm -hmm. Yo voy a ingresar adentro, te voy a señalar qué se fabricó. Estos soportes, La sí, base de sí. los espejos. No más en todo el mundo. No hay. Sí. Y nosotros fabricamos esto. Mm -hmm. Las manijas. No hay. Estaban muy deterioradas porque estos son con materiales que lo hacían 
con producto del de antimonio, un uh -huh. material, la materia prima que con el tiempo se va desquebrajando, se va destrozando. Entonces, el artesano fabricó las manijas. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? So I mean, anyone who speaks Spanish will get more even than I can get from it, but essentially out of the 10 guys that work in the workshop, one of them is just dedicated to remaking parts that you can no longer buy. So he's saying the bumper on this, the stems for the mirrors, the door handles, I mean, the door handles are really ornate. Uh, so, I mean, looking at these bumpers too, look at that. I mean, it doesn't look handmade or anything. So, they essentially, the, the goal is to make them so you cannot tell the, the original from the remake. And so if there's a part you can't get, that's the only time that they're gonna remake something. But out of the 10 people working full time to restore these cars, one is just doing stuff like this. So, it's pretty, pretty beautiful, pretty amazing work actually. It's interesting you were saying they're fully original and you can tell, I mean, in some ways, look at the rear view, or the uh, windshield wipers, mm -hmm. you know, it's missing one, so they just haven't touched it. It was so nice the way it was, it's just been kept. The paint is beautiful, I love these sort of older flat paints. That almost seems like Porsche Grey sort of thing, but obviously earlier. So this one he's saying, it's in 1956, but with the double headlights, that was actually, I guess, 57 and later. Um, and so it's very unique. They don't know if there was any others built like this, so it was kind of, you know, custom, but it was a little ahead of its time to have four headlights in 56. So it could be the only one, but I don't really know. Somebody could Google that, I'm sure. Look at the thickness of the paint right there. Now, I don't know if it's all original. Obviously, it hasn't been restored recently, but you never know with a car that's from 1929 if somebody at some point has repainted it. But the paint is like, it's like that thick. I love it exactly as it is. Um, it's so cool. I know it'll be restored probably better than it was even brand new, but it's just cool to see it as you might see it rolling down the road 20, 30, 40 years after it was built. So this is the uh, first car in the collection. Can you imagine that as a taxi? Now it's for the Plaza Union, so I'm sure it was a nice taxi, but still, this was this Lincoln Phaeton. Was a taxi. <laughs> and it's the first car that he bought for the whole collection. Mm -hmm. wow. Nosotros bajamos fotos de internet y lo fabricó igual, igual, igual. So all that had to be fabricated here on site. That whole grill I'm showing you, the emblem, everything. All from photos from the internet. I'm sure before the internet it was much tougher to restore some of these cars looking for old magazines, writing people in the United States or whatever country the car is from. This thing's amazing though, Chrysler Airflow. I mean, it's just a trippy looking car because it actually looks aerodynamic in an era where nothing really was aerodynamic. All right, here's one for uh, Adam Carolla. Uh, 1935 Datsun. Pretty amazing. Look at that hood ornament there. This is the Datsun right here, so 1935 Datsun. I mean, to give you an idea, if you can't tell in the video, it's about the length of the width of the Packard. So like this could be on a hitch carrier behind the Packard <laughs> to give you an idea, but it's just, it's beautiful. Um, it's like a, a 30s Ford Roadster or something like that, but it's out of Japan at just a little later time period. Um, and of course, just shrunk by 50% or more than 50% almost, uh, but it's beautiful.
Todo es original, no restaurado, todo es original. So he's just letting us know everything in this room is all original. Nothing's been restored. Uh, got the BMW Isetta, Volkswagen Bugs, Mazda RX-7, a Vauxhall that I don't know because oh, we never got them in the U.S., but pretty cool. Got a Lada. Oh, it's the Fiat. So this is what the Lada was sort of based on or stolen or whatever you want to call it, but sort of a better version of a Lada made before Ladas were... Maybe. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, these are beautiful. I kind of like them unrestored like this. Postmobile. Race car. Hay una competencia de coches que se conoce como Caminos del Inca. Sí. Ah. Competencia de coches. I think what's pretty crazy too is he was saying that all these cars were in Peru. He didn't go around the world and grab them now. He'll go around the world to get parts, but these cars were all in Peru. The randomness to have an Aceta, a Packer to this, you know, a little bit of everything. Sí. Sí, 1961. Cool. 1961 Mazda. Mazda. ¿Qué es, uh, ¿Qué es nombre? Mazda. 360 el modelito, sí. Mazda 360. Mira, adentro, sí. adentro. Terrible, terrible. Sí. Uy, oh, pequeña. Sí, pequeño. Sí. Este, 61, el otro 63. Nuevo, nuevo. Por ejemplo, falta la M. Sí. Ya lo tenemos nuevo, nuevo. Fabrica. Sí. Aquí los ah. sí. The supercharged here. I mean, it gives you an example of some of the conditions you're going to find these in. Obviously, all the paint's been beat up and stuff. Who knows? It might have been sitting on the street. We've seen so many other, like, nice cars. Some supercars, but definitely nice cars. Just sitting there rotting away in somebody's parking lot, you know, behind a fence or whatever. But So when you're finding them, they're going to look something like this. I kind of love it too though, like I, I like fully restored, but to take this, get it running, get a windshield on it or something, and just leave it like that, it's pretty cool. Is that not the most 60s, 70s sort of era uh, color? Sort of like baby poop green? In Packard Baker, último año, fabricado. Final year, yeah. 58. Ah. Se acabó Packard. Es bueno, está para restaurar. Y el último auto que Mr. Nicolini sí. compró para restaurar el Mercedes Benz. Ah, uh, here's the final car in the collection. Although he says that, I don't know, another Fiat 500, maybe an L model, the big one. Oh, wow. Oh. That is beautiful. glasses here but it's cracked just like shattered in half I and mean, it's glass like that so he's gonna have a fabricated window you know the, the interior um, panel it's all wood and rotting you know but it's, it's all here you know everything needs to be straightened everything needs to be sanded um, add some material back to it from what's disappeared but this is so cool to see the workshop where you know bandsaw and everything else where they're making all this and I'm sure if we came back in two years this is going to be a perfect showroom quality Mercedes
<laughs> oh. There you go. Brand new. <laughs> That's perfect. Wow. Talk about talk about a before and after. So you saw the the original unrestored one, and then here you go. Beautiful. Por ejemplo, estos biseles, todos chrome, el emblema, las letras, fabric aquí. I mean, just thinking about making the little angles on this so it doesn't look handmade, so it looks original. También las letras, las letras, la manita, muy, muy difícil. El auto está nuevo, nuevo, nuevo. Escucha y mira. <laughs> sí, es muy muy difícil. Uh, ya lo van a fabricar. Sí, sí. Wow. So they're going to fabricate the rear window, which to me is just mind blowing. Los bumpers, los parachoques, ya lo fabricaron. Yeah. Ah, so they're making it right now. Yeah. 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 Mercedes Benz, 1966. Hoy van a ver eh, los trabajos de madera. Sí. Look at that paint. That is beautiful paint. Look at the woodwork. All that fabrication. That's just amazing. See. That's got to be one of the prettiest dashes I've ever seen. Uh, and just all that wood. And so all the wood's Peruvian, so it's like every car that gets restored, it's exactly as it would be original. But there's little differences, of course, right? The metal's from here, the wood's from here. I love it. And this paint. Look at that paint. Oof. So cool. Oh, another set of. Ah, see? So this one's an advertising car for uh, Andino Cement Company of Peru. Hmm. I love that. I hope they keep that on there. It's got old pin striping and the old logo for a cement company. Some probably parked it out in front of their office or something like that, but pretty neat. And he said this one's probably yeah. 20, 28, 28 feet. Wow. And they're they're working on it now to get ready for paint. In line six. Beautiful. Carrocería. See. And there's the body mm. for it. Oh, okay. It's all this wood. Madera. Sí. Todo madera. Sí. No metal. Madera. Yeah, you can see what, what might be original. Almost all of it had to be fabricated. Yeah. Wow. Todo. Atrás. Madera. Sí. Internet. Ah. So you saw that on the car. Look at that. So. You know, must have asked somebody, oh, perfect, look at that. That's what you're talking about, a little piece of paper. Ask somebody who has one to put a measuring tape in front of it, make a cutout, and then there you go. Look at the finished product. I mean, that's just amazing. That finished product is so beautiful. I have a hard time, I have a hard time believing that that came from a photo on the internet, yeah. right? Look at that. Seriously skilled fabricators here. Look at that. Falta el Mazda rojo. Sí. Faltaba la M. Sí. Ah, the missing M. There you go. Is it cast? Metal. Sí. Ya, ya, ya. Sí. Esto luego a la planta de chrome. Sí. Electrolix. Sí, sí. Y finish así. Perfecto. Todo. See? So they can chrome everything themselves. Of course they can, right? That's wow. original. Oh yeah, and there's ah, the okay. there's the eye. Yeah. Lo que está puesto en el auto sí. se fabricó aquí. Sí. Y va, wow. mañana fabrican dos new para el coche rojo. Sí, sí, sí. Todo, todo lo que hace aquí. Muy bien. Ah, los espejos. Sí, ah. sí. Oh, there you go. 
just like the one he was showing us, the, the, the stems for the rear view mirrors that they no longer had. I'm sure they were long snapped off, right? You might be able to order a mirror, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure even if you couldn't order a mirror, the, the, the kind of stuff these guys are fabricating, they could do anything. It's <laughs> muy bien. I mean, tons of tools, but I mean, really nothing. Drill press, you know. Ah, okay. So the Mercedes we just looked at, the gray one with the beautiful wood interior, this is all the chrome for it. Oh, okay. Look at that, beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Let's see. I'm sure you can still get all the good materials and chemicals that make really good chrome too. So beautiful. Copper. 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 Yeah. Copper ácido. Sí. Copper alcalino. Sí. Nickel. Acid alkaline chrome. nickel chrome. Mucho. Y con tiempo, con hora. Sí. As you can tell, this is pretty overwhelming, pretty rad, but you know you're only gonna be here once, probably in your life. So you're trying to soak it all in, and you wish you knew more about every car, and I know more than like maybe a non-car person, um, and I've always loved cars, and always loved walking around car shows, but um, it's really interesting when you know that each one has a special story, and he's speaking to us in Spanish, and I'm getting a lot of it, but not 100%, you go, what little fact did I not get? So if you ever need inspiration to learn another language better, something like this for me is a good, is a good one. Um, it's just so neat that the guy is passionate about cars. He drives them, he loves them. He drives his Ferrari. Amazing, if you're in Peru, if you're in Lima, you have to come check it out. It was 10 sol, so you know, three to four dollars per person, not too shabby, um, but really amazing. The tour that we got, um, from Jose was mind-blowing. I mean, he, he told us about every single car. If I pointed at a car, he would tell me more of the story behind it, where it was found, what the condition was in. He knew which little pieces they struggled to, to remake. Uh, so he's been here a long time, clearly, and he's seen these cars go from a rust bucket to fully restored. So they kind of know, oh, this one was tough because we couldn't get this windshield, so we had to fabricate a windshield, or this one was tough because we had to redo this, the hood ornament, which is really ornate. Um, so those 10 guys that are working full time to restore all these obviously are very good at what they do, but amazing. Really cool. Yeah. It's cool to get to meet the guy too. Just to yeah. Think, I don't know. Yeah. What was your favorite? Oh man, it's overwhelming. There are so many. 
I kind of like the old ones that you see that aren't restored, that have a little bit you do. of you too. more character. A little patina, yeah. you know, I know that word's overused, but there's a little character with it. Uh, something about this Chrysler Airflow, because it's just so insane for the time, it doesn't seem like it fits in the, in the time period. I like... Um, and then I also like sort of the random ones, that MG up there, just because I look at cars and think, what would I have the most fun in? That's what I'm always looking at them and thinking is, which, which one would I want to drive today? And as much as I want to drive the giant Phaeton or the giant Rolls Royce and, and all those things, I think I'd have more fun in the MG. The Ferrari, of course. The Ferrari and the Maserati up there are probably the most expensive, but I don't think that's why I like them. I think it's just they would be fun to drive and so fun to listen to. Cars here. Yeah, yeah, come check it out. Hopefully, did it some justice. But uh, like really anything, yeah, like anything, you can't really do it justice via video. So come check it out. First one. It's gonna be really hot. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's amazing.